Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, it's it's a blessing to to be here. I'm Pastor Lou Burns from Abundant Life Baptist Church in Naugatuck, Connecticut. And we are taking a walk through the Bible in the book of Genesis. Tonight, we are going to be beginning in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 4. And God willing, we'll get all the way um, to chapter to verse 19 uh, with a number of other verses that will give some continuity to the study of Genesis chapter 1. Uh, last week, we did verses 1 through 3, and God had created the heaven and the earth. He was in the beginning to create, God said, and let there be light, and there was light. So starting in verse 4, and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. In verse 5, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day. Now that darkness was the void which was it still is in the universe. If you go above our atmosphere, all there is is dark unless you're turned toward the sun or toward, or toward the moon. It is dark. It is a void. But that light was a holy light. Let's go to Revelation chapter 21, Revelation chapter 21, and verse 23. Turn in your, in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 21 and verse 23. And this is the end of things, as was the beginning of things. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Last week we saw that God was there, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the Lamb, the Word, being with God in the beginning. So this is the light that entered the darkness. God's holy light. He divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day and the darkness he called night and the evening and the morning. Of the first day, if we turn in our Bibles to Psalm chapter 74, Psalm chapter 74 and verse 16. Let's see what David, God said through David, Psalm chapter 74 and verse 16. He says, the day is thine, the night also is thine. Thou hast prepared the light and the sun. Take note here. Even the psalmist knew that the light spoken of in verse 4 and in verse 3. That was different from the sun. If we go to Matthew chapter 8. 
you turn with me to Matthew chapter 8 and verse 12. Matthew chapter 8 and verse 12. Christ is speaking about the darkness. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. The outer darkness, the place where God's light, his holy light, does not shine. And in Matthew tw chapter 22, if we turn to Matthew chapter 22 and verse 13. Then said the king to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So there is the light where God is. And there is the outer darkness where God, God's light does not shine. And if we move on to Matthew 26, Matthew 26, in verse 30. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Christ is being very specific. Where he is is light. Where those who do not believe is outer darkness. Which takes away takes them away. Now if we move back toward first to first John, the book of first John. First John chapter one. First John chapter one and verse five. This then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And lastly, the book of Jude, a couple of pages over. The book of Jude, verse 13. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. So you're seeing that light that came in to this void. That was the holy light. Saw the light that it was good. And he divided the light from the darkness. So let's go to verse 6 of Genesis chapter 1. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters. From the water. Now, this firmament is going to be revealed a little later on as we come forth. He made the firmament and divided the waters from the waters. We go to the book of Job. The book of Job in chapter 37. 
book of Job, and chapter 37, and verse 18. Job 37 and 18 tells us, Hast thou with him spread out the sky which is strong as a molten looking glass? The sky. The waters above, the waters below. If we go to Jeremiah 51, Jeremiah 51, verse 15. Jeremiah 51 and verse 15 tells us, He has made the earth by his power. He has established the world by his wisdom and has stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttereth his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens. He causeth the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings with rain and bringeth forth the wind out of his treasure. The firmament in the midst of the waters. So we have verse 7, and God made the firmament and divided the waters which are under the firmament from the waters which are above the firmament, and it was so. So there are waters above the firmament, and there are waters underneath the firmament. He has divided it. And if we go to Psalm 148, verse 4. Psalm 148, verse 4. Praise him, ye heavens of heaven, and ye waters that be above the heavens. These are the waters that were divided. There are waters above the heavens, waters that we, we don't know where they are. The glassy sea, frozen. Divided the waters which were under the firmament and from the waters above the firmament. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. This firmament, this heaven, that he's speaking about is the first heaven. We call it the, the troposphere, the, the atmosphere in which we live. He made the firmament, called the firmament heaven. In verse nine, and God said, let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. So from verse 4 unto verse 8, the second day, he is arranging the heaven is dividing the waters from his creation. He's gathering the waters and the dry land. 
If we go to the book of Job, go back to the book of Job. In chapter 26, Job and chapter 26. Job chapter 26 and verse 10. He hath compassed the waters with bounds until the day and night come to an end. Remember the beginning of the creation. The light and the darkness. The day and the night. He has the waters to be in one place, the land to be in another. Seeing this, I'm going to Job 33, moving on to Job 33. Verse 8, Job 33 and verse 8, Surely thou hast spoken in mine hearing, and I have heard the voice of thy words. Verse 11, this is the wrong, I apologize, my notes are incorrect. Press that, go to Psalm 33 and verse 7. Psalm 33 and verse 7. Psalm 33 and verse 7. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as in heap. He layeth up the depths in storehouses. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as in heat. And Psalm 95, you go in your Bibles to Psalm 95 and verse 5. The sea is his and he made it. His hands formed the dry land. Over and over. We have God speaking the same words to different people. And the correct reference in Job was Job 38, not 33. Job 38, a victim of my typing skills. Job 38 and verse 8, which is, Or who shut up the sea with doors when it break forth, as if it had issued out of the womb, and going into verse 11, and said, Hitherto shalt thou come, but no further, and here shall thy proud waves be stayed. God set boundaries on everything that he created. He let the dry land here in the midst of the waters beneath the firmament called heaven. And in verse 10 and 11, and God called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he the seas and God saw that it was good and God said let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding after his kind 
yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. God is creating. He's working in earth now. Worked in the heaven. Now he's working in earth. And it was so. If we go to the book of Luke, chapter 6. Luke, chapter 6. And verse 44. For a good tree bringeth forth not corrupt fruit, neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. That's 43. For every tree is known by his own fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. Every Tree after his kind, every seed after its kind. Christ is speaking about good trees, corrupt trees. Every tree is known by his own fruit. From the beginning. Right from the beginning. We go to the book of Hebrews. We turn to the book of Hebrews, chapter 6. Book of Hebrews, chapter 6. And verse 7. For the earth which drinketh in the rain that cometh oft upon it, and bringeth forth herbs, meet for them by whom it is dressed, receiveth blessing from God. This whole earth and the creation therein the fruit tree, the herb. Everything that was created was created for good. We go to verse 12. And the earth brought forth grass and herb, yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. So here we have things. All the sea, all the all the trees, they're all planted, they're all ready to grow. And God said in verse 14, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. The star. The star. Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven. That's above the firmament of heaven. The second heaven. So if we go to the book of Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy chapter 4. One thing I love about scripture is we're turning there. The scripture explain, is, is very self-explanatory. just have to keep reading. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 19. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, 
And when thou seest the sun, the moon, and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldst be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all the nations under the whole heaven. Just to put this in a little context. This is at a time when Israel has been delivered from Egypt. And Egypt, as you know, had a major worship of the sun. They also had a worship of the moon, and they also had a, they had a, they had more gods than sand in the sea. But there is only one God, and He warns against such worship. He created all of these things. Worship the Creator, not the created. If we go to Job, Job chapter 25. Job chapter 25. And verse 3. Is there any number of his armies upon whom doth not and upon whom doth not his light arise? Bildad speaking. But in this, is there any number of God's armies? Can you number God's angels? Upon whom and upon whom doth not? His light arises. The light arises on the good and the evil equally. You have to choose the good, which is good. We go on to Psalm seventy-four, sixteen. Psalm chapter 74 and verse 16, which tells us, the day is thine, the night also is thine. Thou hast prepared the light and the sun. Again, different. The sun is for light for us. But God is the light. Going back to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 15. Light in the firmament of the heaven. And let them be for light in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so, and God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. Culmination of what we read in 14 and 15. Lights in the firmament of the heaven. Divide the day of the, the day and the night. Two great lights. The greater light, the sun. The lesser light, the moon. To rule the night, he made the stars. Stars, he let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. You know, who but God could make certain that there's a star hanging right over the North Pole by which men, when they learn to navigate by the stars in the Northern Hemisphere, could navigate by that star at night. Their position to that star would determine where they were. 
the other stars move around. But that star is a constant. Who but God would think to do that? Think on that for a moment. If we look at the stars also, we go to Psalms chapter 8. Psalms chapter 8 and verse 3. In Psalm chapter 8 and verse 3, when I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained. And we can see a lot more than David did with his eye. But he knew. He goes on to ask a question. What is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? We're nothing. We're nothing. And yet, and yet, God has each and every one of us in his mind. Even since the creation. If we go to Psalm 148, verse 3, Psalm 148 and verse 3. Praise him, praise ye him, sun and moon, praise him, all ye stars of light. Praise ye him, sun and moon. These, these created things, the light, the moon. It still says, praise ye him, all ye stars, praise him, all ye stars of light, the entire universe, the entire, the entirety of everything is such a blessing. We go back to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 17. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And to rule over the day and over the night and divide, to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. He saw that it was good that there is light on the earth. And there is a lesser light on the earth, the moon. And each has a purpose. It all has an exact purpose. He created it for a reason. It all works together. Rule over the day and over the night. We go to Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah chapter 31 and verse 35. Jeremiah 31 and 35. Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day 
and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divideth the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. Verse 19, and the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So we've seen In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. The earth was out form and void, and darkness was across the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and, the, and God said, let there be light. And God. Notice every verse that we read tonight begins with those words. Begins with the word and. And God saw the light and God called the light. And God said, and God made, and God called, and God said, and God called, and God said, and the earth, and the evening, and God said, and let them be, and God made, and God set, and to rule over the day. and and the evening and the morning and the fourth day. God oversaw his creation and said it was good. And we see through the scriptures throughout The message is very consistent about the creation. He did things in order. And he divided things in a way that would allow them to develop in the proper way. The grass, the herb, the fruit tree, yielding their fruit after their kind. The lights, the stars, On a crisp, clear night, if you happen to be in an area there's not too much what we call light pollution, or if you can go away to a, such a place, not too far, and just look up and see the majesty of what God did in the universe. And see that which God did on the earth, that man has not cared for very well. God created beautiful places and man This comes and does as he pleases without asking God first. He 
These are the first days, and it's not the first week yet, but the first days of creation. And it's not over yet. And as we move forward through this study, we will understand more of what God created. And what he said about what he created and what he said about how it was created. And why. Matter of fact, we'll go into the why right now. Go to Revelation chapter 4. Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11. In Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11, God says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power, for thou hast created all things. And for thy pleasure they are and were created. This earth, this people, us. God created this world, the Garden of Eden, for his good pleasure. But man has consistently gone away from God, so he made his only begotten son, the word that we mentioned last, Jesus Christ. He came down and lived a sinless life, died on the cross to atone for our sins, was resurrected on the third day, and arose again to the Father. All because we can't please God unless we can know God. And we can't know God if we have rejected him. So let's fulfill the purpose of our creation as the Son and the moon and the stars and the earth fulfills its purpose. I think I'll open it up now for questions. I'm going to do that a little early. Um, we've covered a lot of ground. If anyone has any questions, I'd be willing to entertain them at this particular point in time.